Do Shakespeare, Karl Marx, Grace Kelly, Napoleon, and President Truman all have in common. They were all skilled in the art of fencing. As Sir Richard F. Burton is quoted in the inner game of fencing, the history of the sword is the history of humanity. Historically, gladiators were taught sword fencing as a means to attack an enemy without being struck at the same time. Modern fencing has become a safe sport that promotes excellence in form, technique, and strategy. Today I'll be demonstrating the proper equipment that's required for fencing, how to salute, and a few fencing moves including the unguard, which everyone probably has heard of, the advance, and the lunge. So first I'm going to show you the equipment that's required. A poster over here kind of shows a couple of different aspects of fencing. I'll go back to that too. One of the most important aspects of fencing is the fencing jacket. Now there's lots of different versions of the fencing jacket. You can see that regardless of what the size or the shape is, it's always going to be white. There's a reason for that because uh, Richard F. Burton is quoted in the same book has said that uh, historically there were people that would coat waxing um, against the jacket, which would actually prevent the tip from being marked because people used to put red chalk on there, so it was a way of cheating. So now they actually make it out of cloth so that you can't um, go and, uh, you can avoid the waxing and so it prevents cheating that way too. This one is actually made out of a heavy cotton material. They can also be made out of stretch fabric. It's really whatever's more comfortable for the wearer at the time. Cotton tends to be what I prefer simply because um, I feel like it's a little more durable as well. Um, on electric fencing, which is something that they actually do doing competitive sports, the metallic jacket is actually um, a gray color and that's so the opponent can actually go and touch it and then it has a receptor that allows it to score. The next part would be the chest protector. Everyone wears a chest protector. Men's are obviously shaped a little different. They're a flat chest protector. <laughs> Women's are folded because they actually, you know, have a little more space for what most women will need. This is, ironically, I was saying this is a size large, which probably doesn't suit many people these days. Um, but anyhow, it ensures added safety um, and it just protects the area that's going to be struck most often in fencing. Gloves. Now, I'm a lefty, so I have to use a left-handed glove. Um, this is to be worn on the dominant side of the fencing uniform, which on my case would be the left. It goes over the left, left arm of the jacket. If you're a right-handed person, you'd obviously go on the other side. And um, this one is made from leather. They can also be made from canvas. And um, they generally have a little bit of elastic here too, so it's comfortable for the wearer. Now, the mask is one of the main parts of the uniform too. You can see that in this mask, there's a canvas exterior right here. This is called the bib. It goes, again, over the jacket because you want to ensure the fact um, that you're protected again here. That way a foil doesn't slip and go underneath and stab you in the mouth or anything. Um, it also has a metal mesh so you can see through, um, but you're still protected. It's made to actually take um, any impact that the foil does show. And then the most fun part is the foil. Woo! And I'm dropping at it. Okay. Um, there's two aspects of a foil. Um, this is a left-handed foil again. They're made for left-handed and right-handed. Traditionally, you can see that there's different weapon types. Um, this is just called a French foil, which means it has a straight bar here. There's a wrapping against, and it's made to be flexed too, so that way it won't snap um, if you actually go and press it against an opponent. There's three different weapon types. The one I'm using today is your standard foil. Um, there's also, uh, within French foil, um, there's one that's called a pistol group. Pistol grip. It's the same, um, except the handle's a little different. It's made for um, people who tend to have like arthritis or carpal tunnel because it's easier to hold. And then there is FA, which is a larger foil. It has a bigger protector because um, within FA fencing, your target is much bigger, so you need something bigger to protect your hand. And then what people probably refer to movie fencing will be the saber. It's actually um, from an oriental background is what they say um, in the inner game of fencing. Uh, and that's actually what you would think of as like a swashbuckler or like a pirate fighting sword too. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some of my items on here. First you would wanna put on 
first you'd want to put on the guard. It has a little back here that you just slap together. And then again, you want to be really safe when you're doing this. The intention in fencing is not to get hurt, it's to be able to strike the other, the other opponent without being struck yourself. Um, every jacket, because you can strike anywhere on the torso, you have a way to step through here. And this jacket has snaps, some of them have zippers, and some of them look like a straight jacket, which is kind of funny because mm -hmm. it zips in the back. And this actually is, uh, because I borrowed this jacket, for left-handed, it's actually wrong. It's supposed to be on the other side, so it's easier to snap, but there's not a lot of left-handed fencers, so most of the time, gear is for right-handed people. After that, you want to go ahead and slip on your glove here. For most women, they generally put their hair in a bun, so that way it won't um, move around when they're actually in competition to, I'm not gonna put on the mask right now, I'm gonna let Melissa put on the mask so you can see what it's like, uh, because it's a little easier to demonstrate here. So that's what it would look like, it would go over the top here. So she's gonna be my Vanna White. Okay, so now we're going on to the actual initial position of what a fencer would do when they're standing together. So the actual angle at which you want to stand would be a 90 degree angle with your dominant foot straight and then your uh, other foot off to a 90 degree angle. That would be my case to the left. Uh, your arm would be faced down here and then when you were bringing up to salute, you always want to have your mask off but it'll be in your hand just like this. You would bring it up to a 90 degree angle a straight angle, 90 degrees, and down. In a competition, or if you ever have a referee even in a bout, you would want to salute your um, audience and then also your referee as well. So it would, a full complete initial position would look like this. You're thanking everyone for your time. After that, you would get into unguard, which would be the initial position here. What I'm gonna do is you really wanna be able to stand in the middle um, with an increasing weight on your front leg here. And then um, women actually tend to make their hips too big, so it's like this, but you actually just wanna have your legs equal distant, bending the back leg here too. So you would, again, you would go from this position um, where you go to a salute, and you would straighten that arm. Arm would be in the back here, so you can kind of move it around. Some other fencers will tend to move it like to the front too if they want. And then, um, but it's really just for balance, so you do wanna have it in the back. From this, you would start to advance generally, which would be something you would do on the bounce. So that's what it looks like. You're stepping forward, almost like a bounce, but you're, again, keeping that leg in the front too. Um, from this point, say if you wanted to attack an, oppo an opponent, you would extend the front of your arm, so you would be in your position here, in the unguard position, and this would look like that. You would want to extend the front of your arm, totally straight in the back, you can see that my arm came from this position down um, to a flat, so I kind of look like a streamline across this way. That's to balance, and then you would want to have the back leg straight like this here too. A recovery would look like that, always back into a guard. You never want to stand all the way back up because that way you lose your, um, you lose your balance and then you offer the opponent more opportunity to strike here too. So um, you can see over here, um, that's what the lunge would look like here. Again, um, the angle is to be more of like a straight line, so you look very lean, and then you can see in this case, um, within the unguard, this person would be striking, so they would be um, gaining a point while this person would be attacked here too. And then I don't have any pants today, but you can see that um, they're actually called britches, and then they have a couple of the other like arm, <laughs> arm carriers too. Um, my sister uses one of those because she tends to be a little bit more tender on certain parts of her arm here too. So, as you can see now, um, fencing has retained its popularity throughout the centuries because it has an emphasis on form, technique, and strategy. Um, you've learned that the um, equipment is required here and it's very, um, has a strong emphasis on safety. And um, we learned how to do an on guard, an attack, and a lunge. The person that I interviewed named Joe Jasper, he is the Prabhu day saver at Metro Fencing Club in Tacoma. That's the one that I go to. And he told me during our interview, the sport that one chooses to compete in which must be an outlet for their passion. 
Anyone who has a passion for what they do will excel.